What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about everything that I absolutely love already about the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette C8. For those of you who are new to the channel, this is going to be my next car. This is my next mid-engine sports car slash supercar. I'm going to call it a supercar because of its sub 3 second 0 to 60. And I cannot wait to get this car. I've already seen this specific one twice already in person. So I'd like to say I have a good amount of experience, at least sitting in the car and walking around it, just getting to see all the options and kind of the spec in person to see how I actually want to order mine, which I will be doing later this week, so I can't wait to do that. So definitely stay tuned for that video because it will be coming soon. So anyway, why don't we get into it? This is a 3LT, roughly about $85,000, $86,000 as it sits. This is basically fully loaded technology-wise and Things like the front end lift, it has the engine appearance package. The wheels are not base, so they're just upgraded a little bit. And then that is pretty much it. It doesn't have like all the carbon fiber bits on it or kind of all those extra options that you can get. There's no high wing, obviously. Uh, it has the Z51 package, which gets you this wing here. Um, so it's, it's kind of a well-equipped 3LT. Uh, I'm gonna be going with a 2LT. The only differences between that are your interior options. So basically seats, uh, like dash color, things like that. So there's not a whole lot of differences between a 2LT and a 3LT, but with those two, it's a huge difference over a 1LT. Uh, so that's kind of just to give you some information on the vehicle that we're looking at today. And what I wanna start with, we're gonna go on the inside with the steering wheel feel. If you haven't been able to check out the C8 in person, I, I love the steering wheel. Obviously that's something important because that's what you use to drive the car, uh, but it just feels so good. The paddles are very large. They are steering wheel mounted instead of column mounted. Uh, I kind of would have preferred column mounted, uh, but that's not, a, that's not a, a deal breaker. That's just a perf personal preference. Uh, so the, the paddles are like four or five inches. They're, they're good solid feeling. Uh, I like the flat bottom and flat top design to it. Uh, it just has a good feel to it. I will be going with the leather because the Alcantara steering wheel um, is gonna get pretty beat up and I, I'd rather have the leather with the stitching. I definitely like it. So it's gonna be fun to drive the car. It's got a good positioning to it, taking her out on mountain roads or out on the track. Uh, it's definitely gonna be fun. Next on the list, what I wanna talk about is the fact that it is a mid-engine vehicle. Now, I think this is going to open up the spectrum of buyers, potential buyers for this vehicle a whole lot because it is going to draw in a much younger crowd than the demographics are for the normal Corvette. Like myself, I am 27 years old and I, I want a C8 and I want a Chevrolet Corvette. Not something I ever thought I would say uh, because if, if you wanna divide halves here, I've never really been a Corvette fan. I like them, I think they're cool. Uh, I've driven the ZR1, phenomenal car. It is so crazy and so loud to drive. Uh, but I was, I was never on the side of actually buying one. Uh, Mustang, Camaro, that just, they were cool to see, uh, but I like the, the Lotus, the R8, I like the exotic supercar, sports car vehicles. So the fact that GM can come out with a, a mid-engine supercar, sports car like this, uh, I'm already drawn to it. I've already sold my R8 in order to buy it. I think that is a really cool move and something that uh, is gonna give you a, a whole lot for the money. I'm gonna be able to get my I'm gonna call it a baby McLaren because one of my dream cars is a McLaren. Again, that supercar or exotic supercar uh, side, what I like. I can spend eighty, ninety thousand dollars less, maybe even you know sixty, seventy thousand less, uh, and get a car that can almost compete with it, still be mid-engine, and almost offer the exact same technology. But I can get a brand new car. So the fact that they've opened up this this realm of what cars can turn into, and for the price. It's, it's crazy, I don't have to get a quarter million dollar Huracan anymore. Not that I was going to buy one, but you're, you're almost in that territory of what are you willing to spend your money on for a vehicle? For under $100,000, you're getting, even though it looks like a Corvette in some angles, it doesn't, kind of looks like a Ferrari at some, at some angles, uh, you're getting, I think you're getting an awesome car and this is without having driven it yet, uh, so we'll see what happens when I drive the car and, and actually own it. Uh, but it is crazy to think that this can compete with cars that are twice the price of it or more. 
Uh, it's definitely pretty cool. I, I cannot wait to start driving this. The fact that it's mid-engine is just something that personally I love. And I'm super excited that they have done that because while I really enjoyed my Audi R8, for the same price, I'm nearly trading out or you know swapping a C8 for R8. This is 10 years newer and it's, it's incredible how far technology has come in 10 years. I'm going to miss my manual R8. You just can't argue, a zero to 60 under three seconds. This is gonna be a, a sweet car. I cannot wait to start driving it out on the road. Uh, let's go ahead and transition to the options list and how you can order this car. And I'm gonna throw in a little comparison with the Supra. So this is a perfect segue into this. I think it is awesome how many different specs you can get within three different trim levels. If you're not familiar with it, there's a 1LT, a 2LT, and a 3LT. You can option this out. Uh, GM claims, base price, you know, $59,995. You can go all the way up to, let's say, probably $90,000, $95,000. I'm not sure if a fully loaded 3LT would break hundred grand or not. Uh, it very well could if you get every single dealer option, uh, which I am not going to do. But the fact that you can spec this out exactly how you want it, I think that is awesome. And the reason I bring this up is because if you're, again, if you're new to the channel, Brian got a 2020 Toyota Supra. And the only way you could get this was a base or a premium. You had one option, which was the driver assistance, which was a $1,100, $1,200 option. And that was it. Toyota is not really making a middle option yet. They're getting those cars out of the way first. With the C8, the sky is the limit. You can basically spec this out how you want. And I think that is really cool. But I'm super excited about it because I've never done that before. I think all the seats are actually pretty cool. I sat in all three of them. The 1LT and the 2LT seats are basically the same. The 2LT just felt, they felt a little bit more comfortable, uh, but they were, they were virtually the same seat. You do get carbon fiber on the cutouts of the back though on the GT2. So the GT1 seat doesn't get you the carbon fiber. And then the only difference with the GT3 seat is it gives you side bolsters that are actually pretty steep or you know pretty deep. Uh, so the one and two are very similar. Personally, I'm gonna upgrade to the GT2 seats just because I like the carbon fiber in them. They have the same cutouts as the one, uh, but it's like four or $500 to get the seats. And I want to be comfortable. That is something that I really like. I've never had the option to pick out my seats. So I'm gonna go with the two. I feel like that is the, I think that's the best seat to get unless you just have the money for the two $2,500 GT3 seats, uh, which I just don't wanna do. All the vehicles that I bought, basically kind of sight unseen. Uh, the Tacoma, I had two options, a used one or the brand new one that I got, and that was it. I didn't get to pick, you know, on a Tacoma, there's, there's not much you can actually pick unless you want accessories like a sunroof or backup uh, sensors or something like that. Uh, so I think it is really cool how you can basically get the car however you want. Um, and it's gonna be fun to do go in person and start to get my car ordered, which I will be doing later this week. Next up, something that I got to mess with just a little bit. I don't know how I got the electronics to turn on on the vehicle, but front camera was something that I wrote down. And uh, you know, it's just a front camera, but there are two cameras up front as part of the PDR system. And when you push on the front camera angle, you get a view out of the left one, the right one, and there's a top-down view. So if I'm pulling into my garage or something, I can just push on that button and get up to wherever I need to go. I've never had a luxury like that before, or like a, I'm gonna call it a 3D camera system. So I think that's pretty cool. The rear camera is just a single camera, so you get your normal backup view. Uh, but I, personally, I think it's really cool. I thought it was something worth mentioning uh, just because I haven't seen that option before. There's not been many videos showing the tech side behind it aside from kind of just talking about it. So obviously those cameras can do much more than just pull into your driveway or your garage. They're part of the PDR system, which uh, you can go around the track, you can monitor, I think, like lap times and things like that, and actually use it to record a lap. Uh, so technically you have built-in cameras to record your drive, which is awesome. And the last thing that I wanna talk about, what I love about the C8, I think this is gonna be a really good daily driving vehicle. And the reason I say that is because I'm gonna take my Lotus Evora and my Audi R8, put them together, and you get a C8. And the reason that I say that is because my Lotus Evora had trunk storage space behind the engine in the back. It had no front storage space. My R8 had front storage space with no room behind the engine in the back. You put them together, the C8 has storage space up front. It has storage space behind the engine. There is a limited amount of interior storage space. 
uh, which I mentioned in my hate video about this car. That'll be in the description below. But with the Lotus, it wasn't really a good daily driver. That was my only car at the time, the Lotus Evora. And uh, it was okay. It didn't really feel anything special on the inside. There was some aluminum. Um, the nav screen was kind of an afterthought. Wasn't really, didn't really work that well. And there was plastic on the inside and Velcro and things like that. So wasn't really the best daily driving car. My Audi R8 was a much better daily driving car. It wasn't my only car, uh, but I drove it as much as I could. Full leather on the inside, navigation, backup camera, heated seats. It, it had a lot more technology in it for a 2010. You put both those cars together, you get a C8 that has so much technology. I think it's gonna be a really good vehicle to drive. I can't wait to have so many different videos on this, even comparing it to my brother's 2020 Supra, all the daily driving aspects to it. I'm really gonna kind of cover as much as I can on the car because it is gonna be, it's gonna be fun. There's some other things on the list that I probably haven't talked about. I do like the looks of it. There's some other things that I'm going to be doing myself to it, which is gonna help me kind of save costs from dealer options. Um, so that'll be some other content that you guys will see. Aside from that, uh, I, I really do like it. I think it's gonna be fun. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. I've never spec'd out a vehicle like this before, so it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, so those are just some things that I like about the car. I will make another video once I'm actually driving the car and it's mine, just to go over some things that I didn't mention today and things that I may find out. Uh, for example, one thing that I missed or didn't mention yet is there's a button under the driver's side headlight that pops the front storage space open. So as long as you have the key on you, you just reach your hand underneath. I did not take a video of that and I wish I did now. You put your hand underneath the first E in Corvette on the back half and that'll pop open the rear hatch. So things like that I will be able to show and actually kind of go over some other things that I've seen in the car actually getting some driving seat time in it uh, which will be awesome. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. I did make another video on things that I hate about the 2020 C8. That video will be in the description below. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.